much. I think I am bang on time. So it is my pleasure to introduce the first speaker today, Dave Thomas. Um, for those of you uh, that aren't familiar with Dave, Dave uh, joined us from NERC, I think it's about a year and a bit ago, a year and a few months ago now. Dave was the chief information officer and head of various ICT projects there. He's had an enormous impact within the museum in the short space of time that be, he's been here. And um, so I will leave him to talk about the digital NHM and what's new. Dave. Hopefully, I'm not just creating, <laughs> creating problems. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't expect to be the warm-up man. Um, I think because Don, Donald's um, playing is late, I, I've got the, I've got the first session as well to talk. And somebody told me years ago to be entertaining, informing, and, and enthusiastic in equal proportions. Well, I didn't prepare this talk for entertainment. I'll be perfectly honest. So if you find it highly entertaining. Yeah, we probably need to talk at lunchtime about whether we're going in the right direction with digital matters um, for the NHM. But um, I've, I've been about, I've been here about a year. When I when I chose that title, it was so that I could be enthusiastic about what's going on in digital in the NHM. But it was also sort of a bit grumpy and cranky associated with a lot of the hype around digital. So my talk is really on those two themes: a bit of the big picture and and you know picking out the hype from the reality, and then a bit about a little overview about what we're doing. Um, you know, as a museum. I do come not from a technology background, I come more from an analytical and ergonomics background. So for me, it's about what it's doing and why it's doing and how the users interact and the people dimension in digital as well. Um, and I think I'm really talking today, not so much with my head of ICT hat on, but because I'm, along with Vince and, and four or five others, Elton and, um, and Lincoln, helping influence the, the digital agenda for the museum as a whole. So I'm not really going to just talk about technical matters. I'm just going to give you a quick run through on, you know, high level stuff. So that's my timeline. I'm, I'm one of the kids from the ZX81 generation. So people that are too young to remember that, that's the Raspberry Pi of today. So this is the stuff that you put, put inside your house and you sort of learn to play around with technology on. And, you know, I, I had a ZX81. I think the only other piece of technologies I had in, in my, uh, in my um, home was a, a tape recorder with a big fat red button on it. Um, and a television, a black and white TV, um, which uh, a portable TV, which we used to sit very close to so we could change channels with our feet. And I think that's 30 years ago. You can see how much has changed since then. I, I was lucky enough to be one of the people that had a computer at school. Um, I had a computer on my desk when I arrived uh, in the world of work. But since then, there's a whole load of stuff that's come at me um, in terms of you know topics, themes, hype, reality in terms of the technology space and that's just some of them you know some of these sorts of things have had a real impact some of them are just repackaged ideas going around and being recycled as well and you know I, I sort of I'll pick up on some of those themes as we as we go through really but um, I think there's there's when I was putting this together there were three questions that you know sort of sprung to my mind you know there's is the world getting faster? You know, people say, oh, the world's getting faster and digital's getting faster, etc. But I'm not sure the world really is getting that much faster. Certainly in my 20 years, there's never been a time when I've sort of looked back over the last two years and gone, Christ, it was really easy two years ago. And I used to, you know, I used to put my feet up and not really do too much, but it's really busy now. You know, I, I'm not sure the world's really getting faster. I think probably what we're doing is actually, as you look left to right, the, the world of digital is getting much more accessible. The terms that we're, we're using are far less technical and far more accessible. They're, they're, you know, that we're moving into a digital world. The picture at the bottom right, by the way, is wearable computing. Sorry, Dave. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a is there a movable one, or I'll use this one here. Okay. Okay. No. No. I'll carry on. Okay. So, you know, the world's getting. I think the world's getting more more accessible. The sort of digital world is getting more accessible. Um, you know, there's a digital first type. Um, approach now coming in as well and I think if I look at the top of the bottom when I put this together there were there were concepts and terms which have been very heavily stoked up um, where you know I've sort of felt um, a little bit um, uncertain or inadequate because I haven't understood these terms um, as they've come up and I've spent a lot of time reading um, trying to trying to understand these sorts of terms and then there are things at the bottom that um, you know have really changed the way in which we look at the world of digital so the stuff at the top quite often has been uh, an evolutionary type concept that's come together and some of you will recognize the terms up there. I won't go through all of them, 
Um, and some of them have been really quite revolutionary, things that have come in and changed the world very quickly. And I think after I put this together, I was trying to work out why I largely have, um, you know, sort of put the stuff above the line as, as, as being conceptual and, and the stuff below the line as being highly um, uh, transformational. I think it's to do with the fact that a lot of the stuff below the line, the stuff that's really transformed us is connectivity, whether it's connectivity between computers, connectivity between spaces, faster connectivity, connectivity between people, um, those sorts of things. Those are things that I think have really changed and revolutionized things. And so for the museum, for me, that's where I'm sort of coming from, looking for connectivity. Um, Web3, people probably don't know, a lot of people maybe have heard that term, but that's all about information connectivity, data connectivity, focusing on um, getting the most out of our, our data so we can turn it into information and knowledge. And for me, it's a well-hyped term, but the reason I put it sort of below the line is because I think that's a, a huge long-term trend. I'm not going to really talk much about um, the public engagement task or indeed the big science task, but I, I will mention, I'll return to that sort of um, task. And I think um, Nigel Sharbot will be talking about open data and big data later on as well. And for, for me, that's a very big part of, of the NHM digital. Um, I think that's the, maybe the short-term stuff. Longer, longer term, I don't know how many of you have sort of heard this, uh, heard of this guy, but somebody was telling me uh, just, just five, six weeks ago, they'd been asked a question about digital strategy and what would the digital world be like in 30 years? And go back to my telly, my black and white telly I used to change with my feet. That was probably, that was probably 30 years ago. So there's a temptation to kind of say, well, I don't know what it'd be like in 30 years. Let's only worry about the next two or three years. But um, I, I think that's risky. You know, I think, I think we need to have a long-term view of digital. Um, as a museum. You know, there's certain things that are going to take a long, long time to come about. <coughs> Excuse me. And I sat next to a, a, a guy at a business conference probably 10, 12 years ago um, for lunch. And he, he was the MD of a company called QXL. For some of you, you may know that name. They were the British eBay of the day, you know, before eBay became, uh, became popular. Um, QXL was the British equivalent. And I asked him about strategy. I was having, having lunch with a guy. And he said, he sort of said, oh, well, you know, we're not really focusing on strategy at all. You know, it's, it's all changing too fast. And actually, for those of you who don't know, you know, QXL with it, well, eBay, we all know, actually prospered. And I think partly it was as a result of the fact that they really weren't looking far enough ahead about the sorts of things that would affect them as an organization. You know, he had no real ideas around, you know, how broadband at that time might affect his organization. He had no real ideas about how social might affect his organization. So, you know, I think the long-term view does count. And this guy, Kondratiev, if you're an economist, you'll probably know a lot more about it than, than I will. But um, he, he was a guy from, from the 1920s who um, prospered under Lenin um, in Russia and, and actually withered under Stalin, because I think he was quite um, market, market economics-based. But um, he's, he's been dusted off recently by many economists, indeed, if he ever went away, because he, he came up with a sort of long-term view of the cycles of what goes on in society and the economy in general. And, and you know, he, he only got as far as, I think, about 1938 or 37 before he was executed by Stalin. But actually, you know, his ideas live on, and they're, they're, they're deb debatable, you know, but I use it to illustrate a point. So he got as far as sort of identifying three cycles, but generally... Um, Kondratiev is presented as, you know, big phases, big stages which run over 50 or 60 years where there's a big level of technology innovation, whether it's steam or cotton or railway or these sorts of things, where the economy prospers, it then sort of overdoes whatever it, it was doing, it goes into decline and then re-energizes itself. So th there's reasonable consensus that these are the stages we've gone through and an IT um, initiative started, started sort of uh, 10 10, 20 years ago anyway. I think, you know, the, the, the point behind this really is, is that actually, you know, the information technology revolution that Kondratiev um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, brings together really is, is, has been mostly a bits and bytes revolution really. It's been about connectivity of technology and wires and things like that. I think what we're going to see is, you know, a sixth cycle. There's lots of debate about the sixth Kondratiev, what, what, you know, what's going to what's really going to drive the next waves of prosperity and, you know, the green revolution. I'm sure you've, you've heard about the, the uh, informatics revolution, the health informatics revolution. And there's, there's lots, of, lots of other things, the biotech revolutions, these sorts of things. And I think 
I think the key point really is, is probably it's going to be any and all of those sorts of things, but, but rather than it being an information technology revolution, or mostly a technology re revolution, it's, it, it's going to be an information and technology revolution yeah, that we're actually going to see ourselves going through. So for as a museum, take what was on this previous slide in here, getting very serious about how we organise our information, how we use our knowledge, whether that's you know information that exists in digital form or in people form, and how we organise it, how we work with our communities, how we use and work to standards, which we'll hear a bit, a bit about from, from GBIF, um, and actually providing leadership in these areas are the sorts of things that we need to be thinking about, because there are plenty of organisations that have risen and fallen within just one of those cycles. We've done pretty well, you know, actually to survive a number of these cycles, but for us to prosper, yeah, I think the information and technology is, is just going to become increasingly important really for us. So yeah, that's me, you know, eulogizing over over digital really. In terms of matters closer to home, do we need a digital strategy? Do we need a digital vision? Has the museum got one? Well the museum's done lots of good stuff on that um, in the past. And and really you know, digital should support what we're trying to achieve in PEG and in, in science and, and in the museum as a whole. So, you know, whether we'll ultimately have a digital strategy or a digital vision, I don't know. But, you know, the sort of common sense things really that I would say need to form a part of our digital vision are, are these sorts of things, really. I won't go into them individually, but, um, or I probably will now, having said that. Um, but, you know, we're going to have to, technology is changing, things are coming at us pretty quickly. We've got to be pretty careful what we choose to 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 take on and what we don't. What we don't, we've got to spend proportion of what we do on building foundational things, and I'll come on to that. And we've also got to spend some time destroying things and actively hunting out things that we can stop doing digitally because everything we do stops us from doing other stuff. Um, we've got you know the, the, the stuff around our, our, our sort of working with others, collaboration. I'm not a great fan of that word, but you get the gist. And you know the last one on there for me is about We've had lots of these good ideas before, but improving our execution as a museum is, is going to be incredibly important to us. So knowing what we're doing and prioritizing, et cetera. Have I got two minutes, Vince? Two minutes, okay. So I'll rapidly go through these. Um, you'll, we'll be talking about most of these this afternoon anyway and this morning. So you know, this is a picture of, of many of the big things we're currently doing and what we might do over the next, over the next uh, couple of years. Um, web, we're already, some stuff already happening on web and some great, analysis that's been done moving to a redevelopment, gallery Wi-Fi we're talking about, um, lots of work I'm sure many of you know about collections and digital asset and that plays fairly and squarely into this, you know, sort of information, importance of information piece. Uh, data portal I'm sure Vince you're talking about, data policy is um, behind all of this we need to be clear about data policy, what we're going to share, what we're going to charge for, um, you know, what we're going to make available for free, what we're going to fuse with other people's data, etc. Uh, apps, mobile apps, it's an apps world at the moment um, and will continue to be for a while. Uh, Alan, I think, is talking about digitization. Anyway, I go on science activities, database libraries, those sorts of things. Mostly are on the agenda today. Some big things in public engagement that may not be talked about but which are digitally enabled um, and also sweeping up some of the other core um, systems and solutions that exist out there. There's a, sorry, I should say as well, there's a huge amount of business as usual work and emerging work. And we're trying to spend a lot of time, I'm walking away again, trying to spend a lot of time trying to understand what's coming at us as well as what we're doing. Because if we can't keep a good idea on that, we're going to be playing catch up all the time and we're not going to be able to do the new bits. Um, just a final plug, uh, two groups that exist that support a, a group called the Digital Strategy Board who are uh, steering the digital agenda. So there's a design group which I'm a member of, Vince, or a member of a number of more audience or a, a member of who we're using, you know, who, who are really looking at what we're doing and trying to make sure that it's reasonably well aligned across the museum and look for gaps, things that we should be doing uh, in the museum that maybe we're not, skills that we should have in the museum that maybe we should have that we don't currently have. So those sorts of areas, that's the design group. Program group are trying to make a sense of delivering all this stuff. Um, so looking at the way it's funded, looking at the way the staff are, are being used, etc. So these are two important groups really as a digital museum for, for coordinating what's going on. And so I make a plug for them, please talk to those people or, or, or you know, let those people know your ideas as well because that will help feed into our digital strategy. So I hope that's been Okay, thanks useful. very much, Dave. So it's thanks quite a lot. HM centric, but... <laughs> We're probably pushing a bit, but time for maybe one question for Dave. Any questions about sort of our ICT infrastructure or?
Any concerns, any issues there? Looks like you're going to save some time. Yes, he, he did. <laughs> well, I mean, certainly I think this new um, organizational structure, I think, within the museum is actually going to be really important. There certainly has been some concerns in the past about how we look after many of our digital projects, and I'm really hopeful that you know, the vision set by that strategy board and the various other groups looking after some of the practicalities can really pull together a lot of our activities. Okay, so no questions. So, all right, we will move swiftly on. Thanks a lot, Dave.